Welcome back to the Camper Build series. This is part four. Today we will be diving into our insulation for the camper. First off, we will create the framing where the insulation will be housed. If you haven't already, watch our first three videos to see how we get to this point. Also, remember to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to our channel to see the rest of the build videos. For this build, we are going to need the following materials. One by two furring strips, two by two lumber, some three quarter inch construction screws, four of these small brackets from Home Depot, some heavy duty construction glue for gluing down the lumber before screwing it in, and some light duty construction glue for gluing in our insulation into place. It's nice to have some gaps and cracks spray foam on hand in case you need to fill any larger spaces. On this build, I didn't really need much of it. I found this foam insulation at Home Depot. It's pre-cut into 14 and a half inch pieces. Normally I would get the foil backed insulation, but my Home Depot was all out, so I went with this instead. I used Owens Corning one and a half inch pink foam board for the insulation of my floor. I also used this three quarter inch plywood for the flooring. These are just some scraps. You can see how bad the bow in the wall is, which we're going to have to fix towards the end of this video with our ceiling supports and a ratchet strap. To start, we cut our support pieces for our floor. I'm using 2x2 two two boards for this. 2x2s two are actually 1.5 inches, so it's just right for our inch and a half insulation. I then screw these supports down to my trailer base. Make sure to use screws that are long enough to go into the base without going through the base. I used 2 inch screws. Don't forget to lay down some glue before putting down your supports. This will help minimize any squeaking in the floor. I like to put down some of the light duty glue before adding in the insulation pieces. I was able to get these insulation pieces to fit pretty snug, which made for less use of the spray foam when I was done. Lumber is very expensive right now, so instead of using new sheets of plywood for my flooring, I just used some scraps from when I built the base of the camper. The floor will be covered with my mattress anyway, so I don't really care too much what it looks like. You will again want to put down some construction glue between the supports and the flooring. This will eliminate any squeaks if you use your camper for extracurricular activities. To secure the floor, I use inch and a half screws. Now we move on to our wall supports. These supports will give us the space for our insulation and will act as studs for our interior walls, which will be FRP board or something similar. When putting these in, make sure there's a support at every edge. This will be necessary when you secure those interior wall boards and your ceiling. On the top edge, I leave a 3 quarter inch space above the topmost support that will fit my cross members for the roof. I space out these support boards as best I can with 14 and a half inch spacing to easily fit the insulation I purchased for the project. 
I also make sure to have supports all along the edge of my doorway. I will need good solid studs to screw in my door when I install it. The same rules apply when installing the supports on the front wall. You'll have to get creative and make some angled cuts to get your supports to fit snug against each other. No matter what, make sure there's a support at every edge for your interior walls to be screwed into. The next step was to add my roof supports. I cut these supports and then used a ratchet strap to straighten the walls while I screwed them in. The roof supports are 1x2s except for the back cargo space where I went ahead and used 2x3 lumber just for extra strength. The 2x3s are also attached with the metal brackets that I showed earlier. I then went through and cut each piece of insulation to fit the spaces I had created. While the insulation was pre-cut, I still had to cut the height of them, and I had to cut them to fit all of the smaller spaces like around the door. Here you can take a closer look at the finished product. You will notice some 3 quarter inch gaps at certain places in the foam. This is intentional, as those spaces will be where my wiring is held. I plan on running my wires from my battery and a storage box on the tongue through the front wall and then back to each part of the camper. You can see all of the wiring in our next video. Thanks for being here to watch this video. Remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel. By hitting the notification bell, you will receive a YouTube notification when we post our newest videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.